Don't worry, Archie. They can't hurt us anymore. Stop, Archie. Sit! It seems I'm finished. But let me start at the beginning. My name is Sarah, and until I was 15, I had never gone to school. It might be hard to believe, I know, but I have a pretty unique family. My parents were zoologists, and they studied wild animals in Antarctica. So for as long as I could remember, I had always been surrounded by endless snow. Lemmings and seals had become my friends, and my mother and father were my teachers, who taught me in their free time. It may seem strange to some, but I'd gotten used to it over the years, so I couldn't have even imagined how my life would change in just a couple of months while walking along the snow-covered beach. It turned out that my parents had been offered new, better-paying jobs, and we were going to move to a big city. Oh, I could finally go to a normal school, just like all the other kids. Of course, I was terribly excited. Sitting on the plane, I dreamed about finding a company to hang out with. A best friend, maybe even a boyfriend. But my hopes? Let's just say they weren't fulfilled. I knew something was wrong as soon as I walked into the school. Other children were looking at me sideways, some were even pointing fingers. I heard jeers from all sides. They called me a redhead, said I was too tall. And the most unpleasant thing was that someone had found out I had never studied at a school before. So they started calling me an illiterate on top of everything else. Day after day went like that. I was alone during the lunch breaks. In the classroom, no one would sit next to me. It was almost impossible to find a partner for any scientific projects. I came home every day in tears and couldn't understand why everyone hated me so much. The strangest thing was that I wasn't the only black sheep in school. There was a blind boy in the parallel class who always walked in the hallways with a cane. However, everyone treated him well. I even saw him hanging out with the popular guys. Why didn't anyone want me around? It couldn't go on like that any longer. I thought I was going crazy with loneliness. So I decided to take my mind off things and signed up to volunteer at a local dog shelter. The animals waiting for new owners needed love and care after all. After that, I hurried to my favorite dogs every day after classes. I cleaned their cages, filled their bowls with food, walked, groomed, helped to wash them. Their loyal eyes and cold, wet noses helped calm me down. More than that, I could talk to them, and I'd really been missing that lately. I treated all of them the same, but everything changed literally in one day. Two incredibly beautiful Dobermans were brought to the shelter, except they were the meanest dogs I'd ever seen. Argo and Archie, as we called them, were constantly growling, barking, and attacking anyone who came up to their cage. The other employees of the shelter were afraid to even get close to them. Well, and I decided to make friends with them at all costs. That's why I started spending more time with them. By that time, things at school were already pretty horrible. So I would stay at the shelter until late at night, sitting next to Argo and Archie's cage, talking to them, even reading them books out loud. As weeks passed, the dogs gradually got used to me. At first, they stopped growling when I came closer. Then they started to wag their tails in greeting. Eventually, I became the only person allowed to enter Argo and Archie's cage. The dogs kept trying to attack everyone else, but they were happy to walk and play with me. I didn't feel so alone anymore. Now I felt like I had two best, most loyal friends. That's when I came to the shelter one day and found their cage empty. I felt like the most miserable person on the planet. I rushed to look for the dogs all over the building, asked the other employees of the shelter, but they all only stayed mysteriously silent in response to my questions. I didn't know what to think. Had they been taken home by new owners? I wasn't in the mood to take care of any other animals, so I decided to go straight home. I had already reached the bus stop when suddenly, I don't know why, but I decided to turn around and look at the shelter building. And you wouldn't believe what I saw there. Archie was looking at me from the window of one of the medical offices. There was so much sadness in his eyes that I realized what was going on at once. I ran back to the shelter faster than I'd run in my entire life. There was only one thought running through my head. If only I could make it in time. I burst into the medical office not a moment too soon. A veterinarian was leaning over one of the dogs with a syringe. It turned out that the owners of the shelter had decided to euthanize the Dobermans, having decided that such vicious dogs wouldn't be able to find new owners. They decided not to tell me anything so as not to upset me again. I'd never discussed the possibility of having a dog with my parents, but at that moment I had no choice. I simply couldn't let my beloved dogs die. 
so I decided to bring them home. I found a moment when my parents were at work and brought Argo and Archie to my room. I worried that my mom and dad wouldn't let me keep the dogs, so I decided to hide them for a while. To be honest, it was harder than I thought. When the dogs barked, I would lie and say that it was a notification on my phone. I would sneakily bring leftovers into my room to feed the Dobermans, which made my parents look at me strangely. I had to walk Argo and Archie at night, so I looked like a pale, sleep-deprived zombie in the morning. But you know what? It was worth it. I thought my life was starting to get better, but I was in for another shock. I came home from school early one day, went into my room, and didn't find Argo and Archie there. You can't even imagine how worried I was. I was sure my parents had found the dogs and taken them to the shelter. They couldn't do that. The time was crawling by when suddenly, the front door opened and I saw my mom and dad come in. They had Argo and Archie on leashes and the dogs looked absolutely calm. It turned out that my parents had long ago discovered my deception. They had just been waiting for me to tell them everything and in the meantime had made friends with the dogs and even managed to get attached to them. The experience of working with wild animals had helped them. I finally felt like things were looking up. Going to school was still awful, but Archie and Argo were waiting for me at home, and we were never bored. Of course, the dogs missed me terribly while I was away at school, so one day, I decided to take them with me. Oh, if only I'd known what it would lead to. I put my dogs on short leashes, but it was still incredibly difficult to handle them at school. Every time one of my classmates tried to shout something insulting in my direction, the Dobermans rushed in their direction. They barked and growled and looked so menacing that after the first lesson, everyone started avoiding me. And you know, I really love that. As soon as I walked into the hallway, people immediately parted to let me through. No one dared to say a word in my direction, so it was the quietest day I had ever spent at school. The next day, I took the dogs with me once again. Eventually, they became my constant companions. I'd never felt so safe and secure before. I walked through the hallways with my head held high because absolutely everyone at school was afraid of me. However, my happiness didn't last long. I used to feel lonely because I had been bullied. Now I was alone because I was feared. At some point, I realized that I couldn't take it anymore. I needed friends so badly, even Archie and Argo couldn't cheer me up. Fighting back tears, I picked up my phone to text my mom. I wanted to ask her to transfer me to another school. Perhaps I could make friends with someone there. I was focused on typing the message when I suddenly felt a very strong tug. I almost fell, but it was nothing compared to what happened next. Archie broke free of the leash and ran like a madman towards the blind boy who was coming down the stairs. I felt numb with horror. I knew that Archie was going to attack him for sure, but suddenly, instead of biting him, the dog froze halfway up the stairs. Then I saw everything happen as if it was in slow motion. The blind boy stumbled and started to fall, but at the last moment held onto my dog's back. It seemed Archie had known what was going to happen. He hadn't meant any harm. On the contrary, he wanted to help. After getting over my shock, I ran to the stairs to get my dog. However, it turned out the boy wasn't angry at me at all. Moreover, he thanked me and invited me to sit at his table during the lunch break. Surprised beyond belief, I agreed, of course. And very soon I realized that the whole school had witnessed that little incident. It might be hard to believe, but everyone suddenly wanted to be friends with me after that. My dogs and I suddenly became local heroes. A little later, I found out that Argo and Archie's owner used to be a blind man, so they used to help him. Unfortunately, he had died, but the dogs did not understand that and had apparently become angry because they thought they had been betrayed. That's how I realized that one small decision could change the entire life of a person. I had loved the dogs everyone else had given up on, and I'd help save them. And they, in return, helped save me. Tell me in the comments down below, how did your good deeds change your life? I will follow your example and maybe make even more friends.